Hello sports fans, it is Wednesday, February the 20th, the year 2013, and as usual, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Before we dive into our NHL hockey, let's go through some scores of note from last night. Let's start with the college basketball, where number one Indiana went into Michigan State and beat the number four ranked Spartans in East Lansing. Very impressive win by the Indiana Hoosiers. I was so impressed the way Indiana won this game. Michigan State actually had a four-point lead in this game with a minute and a half to go. Indiana comes flying back. They take a three-point lead. With time winding down, Michigan State is down three. They take a three-pointer. Indiana actually fouls the three-point shooter. I thought that was an atrocious call, by the way. I didn't think he fouled them. Nonetheless, they did call the foul. So Michigan State down three. With three free throws, what happens? They miss the first free throw. They make the second. So they're down two with one more free throw to go. They miss the third one. Indiana grabs the rebound. They hit two free throws to salt it away. And Indiana comes away with a very impressive win in East Lansing. A very hard place to play. Indiana hadn't won there in 17 years. That's how hard that place to, is to play at. So really nice job by the Hoosiers last night. I was so impressed by them. Not easy beating Michigan State at Michigan State. I also enjoyed Magic Johnson on the broadcast. Mike Tirico and uh, Dick Vitale did the game. Magic Johnson joined them. Remember, Magic Johnson won a national title at Michigan State, so he felt right at home there in East Lansing. It was also nice to see uh, they did uh, Magic Johnson outside the arena standing next to his statue. That was pretty cool to see as well. So Magic, I think, did a nice job on the broadcast. Very nice game, though. I hope you caught that game. It doesn't get any better in the regular season than that last night. Uh, moving on, Miami of Florida continues its winning ways, continues its magic carpet ride season, beats Virginia at home last night. Miami's still undefeated in the ACC. Are you kidding me? Is this ever going to end? Are they going to go undefeated in the ACC? They're going to win the ACC regular season title unbelievable job by Jim Laranega coaching this team. I never thought I'd see Miami this good in basketball. I never thought I'd see them undefeated in the ACC of all conferences. And I never thought I'd see him ranked number two nationally. Jim Laranega, coach of the year. Whatever awards they give out, he's got to get it. Uh, Missouri at home beat Florida. Nice win by Missouri. Florida had this game and they let it slip away. That's the second time this year I saw Florida have a game salted away on the road and blow it at the end. They had Arizona beat out in Tucson. They blew that game, and they blew this game last night in Columbia. Missouri stole this game at the end, so nice job by Missouri. Nice atmosphere in Missouri as well. The fans there are really good. I like that court as well, so big win by Missouri last night. St. Louis at home just blasted Virginia Commonwealth. That's another nice atmosphere that people don't know about. St. Louis has an on-campus arena now. Very nice setting there. They're really good at home. So St. Louis lays the wood on Virginia Commonwealth. Uh, Indiana State lost at home to Wichita State. Bad loss by Indiana State. They're a bubble team. And here was an atrocious loss. Maryland. Maryland last night lost to Boston College after they had just beaten Duke. Maryland is a bubble team. You cannot lose to Boston College. I mean, Maryland just had a nice win a few days ago against Duke. They go up to Boston College last night against a bad BC team, and they lay a complete egg up there. Maryland couldn't afford to lose this game. They're a bubble team at best. That loss may have put them on the outside looking in now. That loss may cost them a chance to go dancing in March. Terrible loss by Maryland. You cannot beat Duke and then follow it up with a loss to a Bad BC team. <clears throat> I mean, I know it's a road game, but come on. BC is terrible. That's not a snake pit to go in. you got to take, take care of business there and beat BC. Bad loss by Maryland last night. Over to the NHL last night. Montreal went into the Garden and beat the Rangers. How well is Montreal playing this year? Montreal is on absolute fire. Remember, two years ago, Montreal was a really good team, was getting great goaltending. Remember, that was the year two years ago the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. In the first round of the playoffs, people forget, Montreal actually had a 2-0 lead against the Bruins and had won both games in Boston. And Montreal ended up losing that series. Boston ended up winning the Stanley Cup that year. Montreal had a terrible year last year. They're back this year, Montreal. Montreal looks very impressive. Rangers didn't have Nash last night. Ottawa at home beat the Islanders. 
Typical Islanders, they, they can't take prosperity. They win a couple games, you think they've turned the corner. Now they fall flat on their face the last two. Tampa Bay at home beat Toronto. San Jose, nice win at St. Louis. And Chicago at home beat Vancouver. Chicago hasn't lost in regulation yet this year. Are you kidding me? Chicago right now looks like the best team in the NHL. Nice job by the Blackhawks. As far as your NBA last night, very light night in the NBA. Utah beat Golden State at home. Golden State's in a free fall. Denver at home beat Boston. Denver, very nice home court advantage. Gallinari playing well this year. And Brooklyn at home beat Milwaukee. Joe Johnson, a couple of huge shots, including the game winner at the buzzer. I'm not the biggest Joe Johnson fan. I've been on him in the past because he makes a ton of money, and sometimes he gets lost in these big games. He came up big last night. He was money in the bank. He hit a couple of huge shots, including the game winner at the buzzer, and the Nets finally beat Milwaukee. The Nets had lost to Milwaukee, like, what was it, 12, 13 times in a row, believe it or not. They finally beat Milwaukee, so nice job by the Nets last night. <clears throat> okay, let's go over to our NHL like we do every week. Let's do our little State of the Union in the NHL. We're going to go, you know, worst to first. We're going to go 15 to 1. I'm going to give you wins, losses, overtime losses, and a little synopsis of each team. Let's start in the East, number 15, the Washington Capitals. 5, 9, and 1, 11 points. They had won three in a row, then they lost to the Rangers. They're still last in the East. How does a team have Alex Ovechkin and be last in the whole entire Eastern Conference? Is this possible? Washington has to be the most disappointing team in hockey this year. I mean, they are dead last in the East, and they have Alex Ovechkin. Hard to believe. I mean, they do have some time to turn around, but it's a shortened season. they got to get going. Uh, number 14, Florida. They're 4-7-4, four, 4, 12 points. Believe it or not, Florida's lost three straight overtime games. I mean, how is that even possible? They're shut out by Montreal, then they blow a game to Tampa. Florida looks like they're not a good team at all. So they're number 14. Number 13, Winnipeg, 6-8-1. They have uh, 13 points. Last in the league in penalty killing. They did lose three in a row before they beat Buffalo last night. Winnipeg, all sorts of problems, you know, killing penalties. they got to improve on that to have any shot. Number 12, Buffalo. They are 6-10-1. They also have 13 points. They beat Boston. Then they lose to Pittsburgh. Then they lose at home to Winnipeg last night. You cannot lose to Winnipeg in your own building. I mean, Buffalo can't afford to give up games like that. You have a bad Winnipeg team in your building and you lose. Here's the problem with Buffalo. 26th in the league in goals against, and they have a good goalie, so it's not his fault. Their defense has been atrocious. Have to pick up their defense, so they're going nowhere. Number 11, the Islanders, they're 6 9 and 1, 13 points. Typical Islanders. They beat the Rangers and the Devils, then they lose 7 0 at home to Philadelphia, and then they lose 3 1 against Ottawa last night. Typical Islanders. Can't take prosperity. I mean, every time you think they're going to turn the corner, they take two steps back. Number 10, Philly. They are 7-9-1. They have 15 points. Lost to Montreal. Beat the Islanders. They're 3-8 and eight on the road. They have to pick up that road play. Philadelphia, one of the great hockey cities in all of America. I mean, they expect more from this Flyer team. I mean, very disappointing so far. I mean, maybe you could say they're playing a little better since the start of the season. Still disappointing, though. Number 9, Tampa Bay. 8-6-1, 17 points. Bad goaltending. Bad goaltending has been the Tampa Bay story lately. They got off to a nice start. They can score bad goaltending. Number 8, the New York Rangers. They are 8-5-1. They also have 17 points. They've won four of six. They did lose to Montreal last night. They didn't have Nash. Not quite there yet, the Rangers. I think they're a contender. I said it, you know, from the beginning of the season. I think they're going to be there at the end with the addition of Nash, with the goalie. I like the Ranger team. I like the coach. They had a nice year last year. I think they're a contender. Right now, they're not there yet. They're not firing on all cylinders. Number seven, Ottawa, nine, six, and two. They have 20 points. Carlson out for the year. That's a shame. They're going to really miss Carlson. The owner went on a rant about that injury. I mean, he said Cook should be kicked out of the league. He shouldn't be in the league. Guys like that shouldn't be in the league. I think the owner was a little out of line. I know Cook's been in, in trouble in the past. He didn't mean to hurt this guy. It was totally accidental. I know the owner's frustrated. you got to give him a little break there. But he didn't need to say Cook needs to be thrown out of the league. Uh, number six, Toronto. They are 10 and 6, 20 points. 7 and 4, their last 11 games. 7 and 3 on the road. Overall, nice job by Toronto. I didn't think they'd be this good. Overall, nice job by them. Number five, Boston. 9, 2 and 2, 20 points. Here's the story with Boston. Best penalty kill in the league. 
can't score on the power play. As good as Boston is and as good as their record is, if they could score on the power play, they'd be unbeatable. Got to pick up that power play. I do like Boston, though. They're big, they're nasty, they're physical, they get after you. Really, really nice team, Boston. Got to pick up their power play, though. Number four, New Jersey, 9-3-4, and four, 22 points, 6-1-2 and two at home. Every year, I, I just think Brodeur is going to fall on his face. He's like 100 years old, and every year he surprises me. Every year, the Devils are in contention. Nobody does a better job running their franchise. They had major losses last year from a good team. They're still right back in the thick of things. Brodeur still doing it. Major props to the New Jersey Devils front office. They have a class act, and they really get the job done year after year. Number three, Carolina, 8-5-1, 17 points. 7-3-1 and one in their last 11. I like the Stahl brothers. I think Carolina's a sleeper team. I said from the beginning of the year they got off to a slow start. Watch out for them in the playoffs. They are my sleeper team in the NHL. Number two, Pittsburgh, 11-5, 22 points, 8-3, last 11, 8-2 on the road. With Crosby healthy, they are a major contender. Crosby and Malkin, major chance to win the Cup this year, Pittsburgh. Unless the goalie has another breakdown like he did last year against the Flyers. Got to have good goaltending. Number one, Montreal. They are 11-4-1. They have 23 points. They've won five in a row. They're number one in the East. They're very impressive. Great goaltending. Tremendous job by the Canadians in a just great hockey city of Montreal. It doesn't get any better than Montreal for hockey. Number one in the East. Montreal looks like they're back. They had a bad year last year. They're back to playing you know, like they were two years ago when they had the Bruins on the ropes when the Bruins went on the you know went on to win the cup. The Canadians had them on the ropes that year. They had won the first two games in Boston before the Bruins rallied to win that series and the cup. Canadians look like they're gonna have a really nice year. Big win against the Rangers last night. Nice job by Montreal. Very impressed by Montreal this year. That's your Eastern Conference. Over to the Western Conference we go, 15-1. Number 15, Columbus. They are 4-10-2, 10, 10 points. They can't get anything going. They're the worst team in the NHL. They'll battle you. They'll leave you black and blue, but they don't win. Good news for Columbus. I said it a few weeks ago. They have three first-round picks this year in a deep draft. So look forward to the draft, Columbus fans. Number 14, Calgary. They have 5-6-3, 13 points. They were down 3-1 to Dallas, and they won. They're playing slightly better. They do still have a Ginla. They don't have a good team, though. You can't expect much from Calgary. Number 13, Colorado, 6-7-1, 13 points. Still no O'Reilly. Still no O'Reilly. Got to get him signed. He's a restricted free agent. They're still squabbling over the contract. Got to have him in uniform. I mean, they blew a 4-1 lead to Edmonton. They allowed 56 shots in that game. How do you allow almost 60 shots in an NHL game? So Colorado needs uh, O'Reilly back in the worst way. Number 12, L.A. They're 6-6-2, 14 points. Still hung over from their cup win last year. Remember how well they played in the playoffs last year? They're still hung over. Not a complete surprise. A lot of times when you win the cup, you're kind of hung over the next year. That's what's going on with the Kings right now. Number 11, Edmonton. They are 6-6-3, six, six, 15 points, 4-3-3, three, three, last, uh, last 10. They have talent. They're exciting. They're hardworking. I do like what I see from Edmonton. Number 10, Minnesota, 7-6-2. They had a big win against Detroit when they were down 2-0. I thought Minnesota would be a little better than this, but they still have time. I do like their top line. Number 9, Detroit, 7-6-3, 17 points. They had a bad week last week. They lost to Anaheim and Minnesota. This is not a vintage Detroit team. I mean, we're used to Detroit being a cup contender. I mean, they may be a playoff team. You can never count them out of that. They are not a cup contender this year. I don't like what I see from Detroit at all. I mean, I expect Detroit to always be in the running for the cup. I don't see it this year. Number eight, Dallas, eight, seven, and one, 17 points. Blew a lead to, uh, against Calgary after they had had a big win against Vancouver. Overall, I think this is just what we thought from Dallas. Kind of a 500 team around the eighth spot in the playoff race. Kind of what we expect from Dallas. Number seven, Phoenix, eight, six, and two, 18 points, six, two, and two in their last 10. Number six, San Jose, eight, four, and three, 17 points. They had lost seven in a row. They weren't a free fall before they won last night. Uh, number six, we have St. Louis. Uh, I'm sorry, number five, we have St. Louis. They are 9-6-1, 19 points. 
They've won three in a row. They're six and two on the road before they dropped the game last night. So St. Louis overall is playing a little bit better. Number four, Nashville, eight, four, and five, 21 points, six, two, and two in their last 10. They have trouble scoring goals, but they keep winning. So I can't say anything bad about Nashville. I think the lack of goal scoring is going to come back to bite them in a big spot. So far, you can't criticize them, though they are having a nice season. Number three, Vancouver, eight, three, and four, 20 points. Blowing some leads lately, Vancouver. Blowing some leads lately. Don't like to see that. Still got to watch if they move Luongo in goal. Number two, Anaheim, 12-2-1, 25 points, 5-1 on the road trip. They just had 7-1-1 on the road. No more surprising team than Anaheim this year. They are the surprise of the NHL. 12-2-1, great job by the Ducks. And number one, Chicago Blackhawks, 13-0-3. They have 29 points, not lost a game in regulation yet this year. They played 16 games. They haven't lost a game in regulation. Are you kidding me? How good has Chicago been this year? Just a tremendous job by the Blackhawks. I am so impressed by the way the Blackhawks are playing. If the Blackhawks get goal, good goaltending, which they have gotten, they're going to be there in the end. Great, great sports city, Chicago. So that's kind of your little overview in the NHL. Uh, Wednesday, what to watch tonight as far as your college basketball. Big game tonight in the Big 12. Kansas at Oklahoma State, that's for first place in the Big 12. Oklahoma State on fire. Kansas playing better after they had that inexplicable week where they lost three in a row, including a game to TCU. I don't know how that happened. Kansas looks like they're back on track. Remember, Oklahoma State went into Kansas this year and beat Kansas. That's not easy to do. This is the rematch. This game is at Galaga Iber Arena at Oklahoma State. Very historic arena. They should be jumping tonight. Definitely watch that game. Kansas at Oklahoma State, must watch tonight. Minnesota at Ohio State, keep an eye on Minnesota. I think they're a bubble team. Colorado State at UNLV, an underrated game tonight. NHL tonight, your big game is Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. Nice rivalry game there. NBA, you got some decent games tonight. You got the Knicks at Indiana, nice game. Miami at Atlanta, nice game. Brooklyn at Milwaukee, that's a back-to-back. -back. Remember, Brooklyn uh, beat them last night at Brooklyn. Now they go to Milwaukee. That's an interesting uh, little game there. Oklahoma City at Houston. Remember, Houston sits in the last playoff spot right now. And Boston at the Lakers, very interesting game. Boston blasted the Lakers in Boston a few weeks ago. Remember, this is the first game since Dr. Buss passed away. I'm sure they're going to have some ceremonies before the game. Lakers should be up for this game. They're always up for the Celtics. So this should be a very, very interesting game tonight in the Staples Center. If the Lakers are ever going to be up for a game and show some life, you'd think it'd be tonight after Dr. Buss passed away and they're going to have some you know, ceremonies for Dr. Buss tonight. And with the Celtics on the other side, you'd think the Lakers would, would show up and play tonight. But the way they've played this year, you never know. So that's what to watch tonight. As far as tomorrow, we're going to go through the NBA, a little State of the Union in the NBA. We'll go through the whole uh, NBA standings, all that kind of stuff. We'll also recap everything that went on tonight in the sports world. So you guys, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. Enjoy the games tonight. I would really zero in on that Kansas-Oklahoma State game. That's a really, really nice game in college basketball. Please check out that game at historic Galaga Iber Arena at Oklahoma State. You won't regret it. That is going to be a tremendous game. You guys enjoy the games. Stay safe. I will talk to you tomorrow, Thursday. Take care.